Hello, italki teachers, and welcome. Um, today, I'm going to share with you how I use Google Jamboard with my students. I'm going to show you how you could use them in one-on-one -on -one classes on italki, for example, but also on, in group classes as well. Recently, I've began uh, uh, offering free classes um, to groups, one one class per week, one hour per week. So I've actually been using these with my students as well, right? So what we're going to do today, we're going to look through some of these Jamboards. Um, we're going to look at how I use it and how you could use it as well, all right? So uh, let's begin. And also, if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you enjoy this video, hit like. Um, I posted a um, a poll a week ago asking which digital tool you would like for me to make a video about first and Jamboard was the most popular one and that's why I am releasing this video right here. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, what is Google Jamboard? Well, it's just like any of these Google applications right here. If you head on over to Google, you'll see your contacts, your uh, your docs, your sheets, your slides. So Jamboard is just wedged in right there. Um, I learned about this about one year ago, maybe a bit more, from one of my university professors who wanted to start um, generating ideas in class um, anonymously, right? So that's one of the reasons why I started doing this. That's how it could be useful in a group class. But again, I'm going to show you how I use it with students as well. Okay, so these are some of my students here. These are some of their Jamboards. I also have um, collections in my other Google accounts as well. Um, probably 50 to 100 of my students have created Jamboards um, and they've created beautiful glossaries. We could uh, head on over here maybe to, to Wands um, because he is just one of those <laughs> one of those very motivated, high-level advanced uh, students. Um, so looking through here, we see some different words that he's added. So basically, the way I do it is for my, um, my courses, which I actually, um, let me just go to my, my course right here, for example. We could go to my uh, 10 lesson graded conversational course. And if any of you are interested in these, head on over to Patreon as well. But if we go to my course right here, <clears throat> you will see in the assignments that I give my students 10% um, for Jamboard. So that means every class I'll give them 1% for completing Jamboard um, tasks. Uh, well, not tasks. The task is basically to add um, vocabulary. It's a glossary at the end of the day. Um, so Juan, for example, had full, had a complete choice as to which words he would add to his Jamboard. So that's the first way that I use this with students. I give them a choice. They are the ones in charge. They are the ones who get to choose what they add to the, um, to the Jamboard, right? Um, at first I was requiring my students to add something incredible like 50 words per week. Um, now I allow them to add as many as they want. So basically they have to add at least one word. Um, so you see here Juan has to hit the hay. So he has idioms, um, kilt, so he has nouns, gospel, gloomy, so he has adjectives, right? Um, some of your students may ask you, where should I get these words from? And if they have that question, then you could give them a list of vocabulary words, potentially from a, um, from a list that is related to the topic of the previous class. Um, so basically, I give my students the choice as to what they do here. They could add a new word or phrase, and then they could add the definition or they could add um, an example sentence with the word in it, right? So for example, they could put, I saw some moss on the rock, right? Um, they could add pictures if they want to as well. And basically what we would want to do, uh, just to show you the functions, you add sticky notes here. So you could add sticky notes with different colors, right? Um, aside from that, you could also use the pen or the eraser. I don't 
typically used that, or images. So it's very good for multimodality. Um, and you could change the background if you want to as well, make things a little bit more exciting, a little bit more interesting. You could add your own background image as well. So maybe if you have one class talking about um, art, then you could have an artsy background right here. And then the next one is about music. You could have a some musical instruments in the background, for example. Um, if you want, you could even create a little repository or a little kind of um, resource um, or like Dropbox where your students could get pictures for these different backgrounds, right? Or you could create a little uh, repository for the vocabulary, right? You could create an Anki deck um, or a Quizlet deck if you like. And again, if any of... If you would like any tutorials on how to use those tools, then let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, this is an example of how Juan used this right here. So basically, he will put his words in. Um, now, how do I assess my students, right? Well, one way I do this at the beginning of class, we would typically go to Juan's, um, his, uh, his progress report. So I'll just show you a sample progress report. I, I don't think I should show everything that I have one, but um, progress. Yeah. So for example, if I go to one of the progress reports that I have here, we could just go to, um, do, do, do. let's find a conversational one. Yeah, what well, leads conversational. So each class we have a different topic um, we could see here we have the date and then we have the marks, right? So attendance, blog post, Jamboard Word, SoundCloud upload, right? Um, so we will start by going through task by task. I will ask my students, have you completed this? Yes. Okay. Two out of two. Have you completed this? No. Okay. Zero, zero out of two, for example. So I'll ask them, have you added the Jamboard words? Yes, okay, fantastic. Let's go over and check that out, okay? So we'll go over to uh, Jamboard. Uh, maybe I'll look up what leads uh, Jamboard, his glossary. And I will quiz him on some of these words. So maybe it could be something as simple as saying, what does a pebble look like? Yeah, or where could you find a pebble? It could be something like, use glazed in a sentence or sorry gazed in a sentence <laughs> um you could ask are you an early bird so you could actually use the phrase in a question organically instead of getting them to explain what it is or to answer what it is right so those are some different ways you could assess another thing i do of course i create cahoots for my students as well um, and uh, there is a tutorial on cahoots which is available on my patreon um, for any patrons all right so that's basically it how i use it with uh one-on-one -on -one classes right there it's pretty straightforward and simple now how do i use this with group classes well one thing you could do uh this is for my free lessons right here um one thing you could do you could do it for uh, brainstorming right so i recently had a class which was based on polyglots so i asked what are what is a polyglot and i shared a link to this um jamboard right here you could share the link right here, copy the link, send, send it to your students. If you have multiple students at one time, because some of you may use it, like I use the Jamboard with my college students as well when I teach on Mondays and Fridays. So uh, what you could do is just add, a, the, just brainstorm, um, just to kind of kick things off. After this, I looked at pros and cons. So what are the pros and cons of learning multiple languages? And again, my students were able to work on this. It's anonymous. That's one of the good things about Jamboard, that it's anonymous. So nobody knows what you're adding, right? Or nobody knows who's adding who. Um, do, do, do. And I've also created collaborative Jamboards with my students. So basically, um, I will get them to read an article or watch a video for homework, and then they will come to class um, and I'll ask them, are there any new words from that article? They will tell me and we'll add them to our collaborative uh, Jamboard right here. Yeah. 
Um, I asked them to define minimalism, or actually I gave them a set of definitions and I asked them to explain which one they agree with the most. So that was interesting. That was for our topic on minimalism. This is our glossary again. So see, those are a few ways right there that you could use um, that you could use Jamboard with your students. I believe this is about it. You could use this in a presentation, but I don't really need to do that much. You could rename it. You could download it if you want to. Save frame as image, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if any of your students don't have access to Jamboard, for example, I have a student from Ch from China and she she does she either can't access it or doesn't know how to access it. So I just download the PDF um, every few classes and send it to her. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. All right. So I really hope that um, helped all of you. Um, just a nice little quick tutorial. I really, one of my goals is for teachers to develop their digital literacy so that they could learn a little bit more um, as they go along about these different tools. So th this could help their teaching and also help them perhaps even in their work. So I hope this is useful for you. Um, if any of you haven't done it already, sign up for my free online course. I have a free course on Udemy. It's in the comment, it's in the description of every single video that I make. Check that out. I already have, hunt I, th I, th I think, I think 500 uh, teachers who have signed up. So that's excellent. And a bunch of teachers have finished the course as well. It's free. You have nothing to lose. So I hope that uh, helps you out. Um, in the future, I'll be talking more about these kinds of uh, tutorials right here. But for now, uh, keep teaching and uh, keep smiling.